Oh, I'm doing You're doing the first it half of the yes. page. Okay, that, that's, that's fine. Okay, so next up then. Um, um, can you help me with the slides? Yeah, sure. I hope she put the laptop <laughs> looks I've been linked. Somewhere, but it yeah. looks different. <laughs> you know, Andrew, because you're standing <laughs> over here. <yeah>. Set off. <laughs> So next up, we've got a double act. Um, Birgit's going to start, Birgit Smith, and with her colleague, uh, Nechla Retberg, they're going to talk about repository communities in open air. Yeah, so um, we'll talk about um, what is in it in, in open air, and um, I will do the first half and then hand over to Nechla. So uh, first, a bit about the vision and about the project and some conclusions. So our contact, uh, our project is rooted in the interest of the European Commission to make some impact on the European economy. And the latest um, call, uh, which was released uh, just today, it's, uh, I mean, one slogan is, knowledge is the currency of the global economy. I mean, they care about, uh, uh, say, uh, access to information, of course, uh, as, a, as a something which is of worse for the public, but also about um, the economic impact you could um, you could boost your economy through this. So and we are heading towards um, uh, Horizon 2020, the next framework program, and there will be a release of a new policy uh, coming, coming soon and a kind of uh, uh, interaction with the community has, has been taken place last year and also right now there's some stakeholder um, comments on this. So we hope that, well, they will release a stronger mandate, which uh, should still be a kind of a green mandate, but also combines these two approaches, the gold and the green. They give funding for open access publications as, as well. But the infrastructure part is something they make, make strong uh, statements about. I mean, which is then, well, the thing which we are doing in, in open air. We support this, um, um, uh, this open access mandate through a network of people and a, a, a technical infrastructure. So, it's a open, as open access publication infrastructure from the open air site. Then you have uh, a suite of projects uh, which do um, infrastructures for open access uh, to research data. And somehow open air plus sits in the middle and uh, builds the links, um, I mean, linking publications and, and research data. And well, other projects coming up which do similar things. So Open Air itself is a project which, uh, which involves 27 European countries and um, about uh, 40 partners. And it's uh, basically the, the open access uh, pilot kind of thing. So and it measures the impact of this open access pilot based on, a, well, you harvest information from um, institutional repositories and um, disciplinary repositories and there's an addition, a, a kind of orphan repository, which is uh, very similar to what you have in the Edidina uh, kind of repository where anyone can deposit and open air harvest from there. So any project which do not know where to put publications could use this repository. And then you, you will, um, get the funding information through the European Commission database and add um, information from Open Door to somehow um, uh, uh, lead the way to where to deposit, which also is based on uh, an ordinary approach which uh, Edina has, has um, in, in, uh, in this uh, open depot. So, and uh, functionalities on the user point of view are you, yeah, you have an ingest uh, kind of and uh, research bar browse and statistics, which I will show briefly, and yeah, also things like um, certain metrics which you can add to publications. So these are the three parts of the project. Well, t a technical part, a networking part, and uh, services-oriented functionalities which you have to advocate to your <laughs> well, um, uh, uh, range of stakeholders. So networking itself is, uh, well, we are over 40 partners. These are the partners of Open Air Plus, actually, 
uh, when the project started, we had a meeting in, in Pisa last, uh, last December. So where Nacha joined the project. <laughs> and um, so a network of open access knowledgeable people uh, which do advocacy for open access in particular for the open access mandate. We run a help desk and reach out to a um, range of stakeholders, which is researchers, but also research administrators, uh, a bit of publishers and uh, well, other, other kinds of stakeholders and organized in, in four regions of Europe, North, South, East and West to make it uh, handable. I mean, lots of people involved. So, and as this um, research environments are very um, heterogeneous, there are of course um, a, a range of approaches on how you handle this. I mean, some, some uh, are more, well, they are already networked and then you can um, harvest from a harvester kind of thing. And for others, you have, a, uh, well, you do it uh, one by one and they register with open air. And you, uh, you use this as opportunity, of course, to, to advocate the case of open access in your national environment. I mean, they talk to their research funders and link these activities. So look at our website and um, what you can find. Well, for this is just a list of where, what, kind, what can the individual kind of stakeholders find in open air. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, I mean, research administrators are important for the project because they have the access to the information about uh, FP7 funded project and uh, have some access to researchers and can push them a, a little bit to the library. There is the place to deposit your publications. So just a couple of examples. Claiming publications is you find um, each project finds a uh, specific uh, website, which is a recent uh, new functionality um, where we have uh, brought together a list of publications harvested from various sites as uh, from repositories, but also uh, text mined from web of science and other, uh, other sources. So what they can do, uh, they can of course look up their information and uh, there are some uh, functionalities like you can uh, download download this list and uh, put this as a snippet in your project website. So Yuri Bazin has done it and they are very good in advocating open access. So administrators, we would like to, um, to somehow review their um, kind of um, workflows and always thinking about, well, what can what can I do? Um, to enhance this open access mandate, which is obligatory, but of course the projects are not so well aware about it. <laughs> I mean, they, they do not sign themselves and they, to some degree, of course, they don't care. So, and um, uh, what OpenAir then offers for research administrators are, of course, uh, uh, various kinds of statistics by, by um, I mean, this is something, of course, the European Commission would like to see, well, how much is open access in these various um, programs and uh, or per, uh, per institution or per, by scientific area. So in statistics, um, based on article level statistics, you can add this to a public, on a publication level or on a repository level or then on a project level. So these kinds are, there are some prototypes out, uh, out there developed by open air. So in step by step, we add um, further repositories as, as data sources. So and repositories um, themselves, um, you're invited to join. And this is not a difficult exercise. You just, I mean, one important step is, of course, to register an open door and then go to the open access or uh, to open air's website uh, follow the guidelines and um, it's it's basically that you add some information in three fields of of dublin core that you have uh, information about the project which is an identifier uh, a certain a certain number then you have an access mode which is open access or embargoed and if embargoed of course you need the embargo end date so uh, See three uh, things you have to take care of, and then you register, and and you are harvested by by open air. So our challenges are 
uh, in some countries, um, there's um, very well uptake um, on the site of repositories, like in Portugal or in Spain. But other countries are more reluctant to take this up. And so we, uh, of course, uh, try for other solutions, like working now with um, Repository Net to cover the UK, where you have a phenomenon that yeah, well, individual repositories have other priorities, working on a, a better connection between Chris and repository and, and other things. So, but doing it in a coordinated way should be the way of forward. So, and also we hope, of course, for a, a slightly stronger mandate. Right now it's, uh, well, you have to do your best effort, but well, this mm, could of course be enforced. <laughs> um, solutions are, we offer a range of toolkits for all kinds of stakeholders, and they, you can look up uh, information in, in a webinar, webinar mode. And uh, for identifying publications, we did text mining. And well, we uh, cooperate with, uh, we don't for cooperation with UK initiatives. And the current numbers are, well, about 20 seconds. Uh, um, a uh, thousand publications, where are some duplicates still, uh, but it's, uh, well, about, say, 30% open access. And as you can see, well, um, on the bottom, there are some countries uh, where you uh, possibly have um, already covered all, all repositories because there are only a very few repositories, like in Eastern Europe, but there are, of course, uh, countries like, uh, for example, Germany, where there are lots of repositories out there, and they haven't taken have taken the step yet to to register or see this as an opportunity for uh, for open access. So now, Najla. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone. Hi. Okay, I'm Najla, and I'm sort of project manager for the Open Air Plus side of things, and I'm just going to give you in a very short space of time, um, a little sort of teaser about what we're, what we're up to in Open Air Plus. So it's um, really a continuation of Open Air. Um, and um, in, in December, we started. So there's an overlap between the two projects. But in terms of where we're going, we're heading into the future with Open Air. That will be the, that will be the brand, so to speak. And in Open Air Plus, we're enriching the experience and, and, um, and adding on to what Birgit's just mentioned, some other features. We've got more countries involved. We've got all the European EC countries, um, plus five more, and we're a slightly shorter project. Uh, we're funded by the, um, an FP7, by the way, the European Commission. Um, so the main concept of Open Air Plus is that we're linking, and we're linking from the publication base that we have out to related data sets. Um, and as well as, as well as that, we're also linking to funding information. So building on um, what Birgit said, it's also being able to measure the impact of funding schemes outside FP7. So we want to link to other publications um, outside this particular um, funding of FP7. And we're also looking towards our own um, future, where a lot of these projects that we're talking about today are, are of course, just projects, and we want to build a service um, and be sustainable. So we're um, researching into business models and sustainability. So back to the slide that Birgit showed, and I'll show you where we're sort of adding and, and enriching the whole experience. Um, we're bringing in the driver repositories into the open air information space. So this is going to be 300, over 300 validated open air, open access repositories. So that's publication, publications. And then we're going to hook up to data repositories. So we're not entering the data world in terms of curation and data management, but we want to connect to lots of different data repositories where we can. We're also building our own orphan data repository for data um, at CERN. Um, as I mentioned, we're expanding to other national uh, funding schemes, and we also want to hook up to Chris Systems, so our data model will be Serif compliant, and you can chat to Paolo at the poster session later on this evening about that. Um, we're looking to include researcher IDs, so we've already spoken to ORCID um, and also FundREF about other funding details that we can include. And all this will go into the information space. Um, as Birgit said, we're going to text mine a lot of the content, but we'll also add services such as deduplication and classification and linking. 
So um, I want to t tell you a little bit today about the work we're doing on enhanced publications, which you can see there at the top. We're also expanding our help desk um, services to, um, to help our, our community with data-related issues, and we're building a set of APIs to be able to, um, get, get to access our data within our information space. Just now, though, I want to talk to you about some guide work we're doing on guidelines. Uh, as Birgit mentioned, there are open-air guidelines for publication repositories, but we're also building guidelines for data providers. Um, and what this means is that on top of the existing open-air guidelines, we're looking about looking how to um, uh, actually uh, contact the, the metadata about research data, so how research data repositories might be able to expose their metadata. However, we don't want to set, uh, produce another set of guidelines per se. This is more an exploratory work so that we can actually um, help our communities and add value by saying this is, the, this is the research work we've done on data repositories, this is how they manage data, this is, this is how data repositories are set up, these are the standards, and this, this will be used within the community of open air because there may be some countries or regions or, um, where data repositories are not particularly well developed, and with this knowledge about data repositories um, we might be able to push, push that forward within Europe. So the work them, that the team are looking at at the moment um, are common vocabularies between metadata. So we're working with Datasight on, um, well, we're, Datasight are part of the project, but also that they're finding out the very minimal metadata fields that we can extract some information about the data. Of course, there are many different metadata schemes used within data repositories, but we want to be aware of them. Um, some of the entities and the relationships between data sources, do these data repositories, do they hook up to um, just flat files, or are they also hooking up to RDF and open data um, um, inter interrelations as well? And certainly we're looking at uh, other interfaces for the data for data exchange. Yeah. So in terms of scope of um, the repository, we're also interested in different types of data. Data repositories are very heterogeneous, we know that, and we're collecting a whole list of different data repositories. And we want to find out about uh, long-term preservation as well and curation. So if you um, know of a data repository um, or have one, please do get in touch if you're interested in hooking up to open air and, and uh, making your data more visible uh, via, via their relationship through publications. Keep in touch with us. Um, on to enhanced publications, as we know this is a static publication and here is a graph, you can't do much for this graph, it would be great if a user would be able to be able to um, play with this data a bit more and access and, and drill down to it. So we're working on um, building a prototype for enhanced publications, we're working with three different scientific partners, um, in terms of life sciences, European Bioinformatics Institute, DANS, that's social science data and the British Atmospheric Data Centre. We're across, open air is cross discipline, we mustn't forget that. And to build an infrastructure, a generic infrastructure, we have to have a full understanding of different disciplines. So that's why we've chosen these three different disciplines to work with. Um, and they also get something out of it if we're enriching um, and finding out citation information and other links to data um, uh, repositories and data sets. They might be able to ex import that into their data as well. Um, so the first step is to represent some prototypes, and I just wanted to show you a couple of examples here. This is EBI, and they already have HTML. Um, uh, this is how they're producing their, um, uh, within, within UK PubMed Central, they'll have an abstract with um, author, an author list, and further down might be links to, um, to images and to videos and so on. Um, there'll also be a tab for citation information and the bio entities tab up there will also link through to Uniprot. So this is an HTML version of what UK PubMed Central produce. Now we're working with Dan's and the NARSIS system. They've reproduced this into what might be a more visual version for the user to, <coughs> to work with. And this is not HTML, this will be semantic an RDF, so it could be imported to other data infrastructures and open data. So that's quite an interesting way of representing what we call an enhanced publication. Down there is the publication itself, the article, and that's also linked to images and videos. Up there you'll get the project information um, and the organisation and the author information. 
Of course, there are issues with this. Who's making these links between data? Who's to say uh, what, what's connecting the data to the publication? EBI have, have years of work in curating data, and experts do this. If you do this via the Open Air website, um, we have issues to, to work with there. So this is an exploratory exercise. And where are the boundaries of, a, of, of an enhanced publication? A publication uh, could be linked to many different kinds of data sets. So we have some questions to answer. As Birgit said, uh, the repository landscape is very diverse, um, but we have uh, many different ways of bringing in content into our system. In Open Air Plus, we want to be fully aware of data initiatives and to be able to educate our community about them and to start to link to data, data repositories via the publication. Um, we have to do work on engaging particular stakeholders, but we mustn't, also, we mustn't forget to neglect the researcher. When I talk to them about open air, they are somewhat, well, really what's in it for me, so we need to set up workflows and, and give value to researchers. Um, but open air is a network and a community of practice that's very valuable, and we hope to be able to sustain that far into the future. Um, you can meet us today at poster sessions, and we're also running a series of workshops in the Open Air Plus project on th uh, three different topics, linking research, legal issues. We have a whole legal work package within Open Air Plus, and interoperability, which is <coughs> right at the bottom, but it's actually the next workshop coming up in January in Portugal. Um, you can follow us on, on various um, Twitter and via our portal, um, and you can also subscribe to our newsletter, and do contact Berger M and I um, after this or in the course of open repositories. Thank you very much. very briefly with them. They, they call me about how we're actually going to contact data repositories, not about text mining, but that's interesting to know. Yeah, they've, they've done all this okay. text mining and similarity <coughs> and implementation work. Mm -hmm. um, so you might want to talk to Good. them about that. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to do virtual effort, yeah. there's always... The others doing it as well, I mean, they decide so they yeah. what news direction with others so doing. Yeah. Yeah. Or it might be someone who wants to, <laughs> to collaborate yeah. with yeah. That was a two-minute. Okay. <laughs> 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 ah, okay. <laughs> now, now, there's, now's a naughty question. <laughs> okay. So. Come to our poster, maybe. Yeah, if if so, Paolo is um, making the, the link to the technical people, and I, uh, they have, of course, tools already for yeah. finding the uh, institutional information and then looking for project information within the full text and so on. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, questions at any time. <laughs> then you'll get the moo card later. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you both very much.